I want to talk to you about marine debris. So, first I want you all to raise your hand a little bit. Everybody, a lot of people did this yesterday. And I want you to hold your breath for as long as you can. And that means, like, no breathing through your nose or your mouth. And when you're done, please put your hand down. <laughs> so I all want you to sort of re remember the very last second before you put your hand down. Did you feel like you needed air and like that moment of panic? So if you think about that extended, that's how it feels like to suffocate. At least 100,000 marine creatures die every year because of our plastic pollution. When you throw something into the trash bin, you think that it's being recycled. But out of 300 million tons of plastic produced each year, only 10% is recycled. Out of all plastics, 15 to 40% end up in our oceans. Very drastic compared to the 1975 study that concluded that then it was 0.1%. Most of them end up like this. In January of 2017, there was an estimated 165 million tons of plastic in our oceans. That's 150 billion kilograms of plastic waste that will never go away. So I want you all to raise your hand again if you've used any plastic today. 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 <laughs> the thing is, we would all like to not think about this. We throw our waste away and we think that it takes care of itself. It's not of our business anymore. It disappears somewhere, but it doesn't. They end up in our land, in our ocean, and what comes around goes around back to us. A plastic bottle takes 450 years to decompose, a fishing line 600, and a plastic bag can take up to 20 years. And then we think, after these 20 years are over, it's just gone, right? Plastic bags break down, but not into nothing. The particles biodegrade into smaller and smaller pieces over time, small enough to be eaten by sea creatures, leaving them to starve on a full stomach of plastic. It's kind of disgusting, but these are found. They're small enough to go through fish skin and enter our food chain. Microplastics are everywhere. Here in LA, a study says that one in every four fish contains an identifiable amount of plastic. So on our plates, we're eating who knows what. Plastic bottles, plastic utensils, old rubber tires, 50 old disposable diapers. This problem might seem far away, but it's very real and very personal to every single one of us sitting here today. No one can say that they haven't contributed even a tiniest bit to this worldwide problem. We all sort of want somebody else to deal with it because it's too complicated, too big of a problem for us to tackle. Somebody else that's not any of, any of us will step up and solve this. There are plans for action. 50 big screens cleaning the ocean, machines, garbage wheels, and while those might all work, they don't banish plastic into thin air. Nothing will change if we keep on producing more and more plastic waste. In this past decade, we've made more plastic waste than we have in human history, excluding this decade. Nobody can just step up and change this. It's impossible for one person or one small group of people to clean 150 billion kilograms of plastic or rid the ocean of uncountable amounts of microplastics that are everywhere. There have even been fungus and bacteria discovered to be able to live on a diet solely consisted of plastic. Yet, despite all of this, the problem is still here. Have you ever thought about why? There are scientists, organizations, and just plain people who've dedicated so much of their attention and a lot of their lives to this problem. So why has not improved? This marine debris is a ticking time bomb. Every day, every hour, every minute, more and more plastic waste is being produced and disposed of. 
Every second, the oceans are breaking down waste bit by bit to microplastics. The reason why this problem is still here isn't because people don't know about it, because they do. Presentations, documentaries, speeches, cleanups, and products, they're all there and they are raising awareness. But plastic is just conveniently everywhere, and sometimes it's the only option available. The world isn't asking for you to not eat this or not use this and that because it's plastic. The world is asking for you to, that when there's a choice, like there often is, please make the right one. Throw the plastic away into the recycling bin and take the 10% chance that it will be recycled instead of casually dropping it onto the ground like it was never yours. As Professor Richard Thompson says, the solution to two major environmental problems are non-sustainable use of fossil carbon and accumulation of debris by utilizing end-of-life plastics as a raw material for new production. Plastic isn't all bad, but it definitely isn't all good either. It's the way that we're taking care of it that is slowly killing our planet from the inside out. When plastic was first introduced to the world, it was the best thing ever. So why not now? It's because we're overproducing. We're making things that we're using for a few minutes or for a stretch, a few decades, out of materials that will take centuries to decompose. We aren't efficient. And our plastic flow will never stop if the producers never stop making more plastic. And since we are the origin of this problem, we should be responsible. The idea isn't for you to use no plastic at all. The idea is for you to understand and put in your little effort. Small things can go a long way, and each and every person is important in this movement. To help, you don't necessarily have to join an organization or do something, although I strongly encourage that you do. You just have to understand the severity of this problem and keep it in your head, hopefully for the rest of your life. Thank you.